The question of where we come from is one that has fascinated humans for centuries. For a long time, it has been widely believed that modern humans appeared in Africa around 300,000 years ago and descended from a single lineage. However, new research using advanced analysis based on full genome sequences from the University of Cambridge suggests modern humans are a result of not one, but two ancestral populations that diverged 1.5 million years ago and later came back together in an admixture event approximately 300,000 years ago, with one group contributing 80% of the genetic makeup of modern humans and the other contributing 20%. While previous research has shown that Neanderthals and Denosovans interbred with Homo sapiens around 50,000 years ago, the new research suggests that long before those interactions, around 300,000 years ago, a much more substantial genetic mixing took place. Unlike Neanderthal DNA, which accounts for about 2% of the genome in non-African modern humans, this ancient admixture contributed up to 10 times that amount and is present in all modern human populations. What sets this study apart is its approach. Instead of relying on ancient bones for DNA, the researchers analyzed modern human genomes to detect the presence of ancestral populations that may have left no physical trace behind. The data comes from the 1000 Genomes Project, a global initiative that sequenced DNA from diverse populations across Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Americas. To carry out their analysis, the team developed a computational algorithm called COBRA that models how ancient human populations split apart and later merged back together. They tested the algorithm using simulated data and applied it to real human genetic data from the 1000 Genomes Project. While the researchers were able to identify these two ancestral populations, they also identified some striking changes that happened after the two populations initially broke apart. Immediately after the two ancestral populations split, we see a severe bottleneck in one of them suggesting it shrank to a very small size before slowly growing over a period of 1 million years. This population would later contribute about 80% of the genetic material of modern humans, and also seems to have been the ancestral population from which Neanderthals and Denosovans diverged. However, some of the genes from the population which contributed a minority of our genetic material, particularly those related to brain function and neural processing, may have played a crucial role in human evolution. The scientists also found that genes inherited from the second population were often located away from regions of the genome linked to gene functions, suggesting that they may have been less compatible with the majority genetic background. This points to a process known as purifying selection, where natural selection eliminates harmful or incompatible genetic variations over time. Beyond reshaping our understanding of human ancestry, the researchers believe their method could revolutionize how we study evolution in other species. They also applied the COBRA model to genetic data from bats, dolphins, chimpanzees, and gorillas, finding evidence of ancestral population structure in some, but not all, of them. What's become increasingly clear is that the traditional idea of species evolving in neat, isolated lineages is overly simplistic. Interbreeding and genetic exchange have likely played a recurring and crucial role in the emergence of new species across the animal kingdom. So, who were these mysterious human ancestors that contributed to our DNA and made us who we are today? Fossil evidence suggests that species such as Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis lived both in Africa and other regions during this period making them potential candidates for these ancestral populations, although more research, and perhaps more evidence, will be needed to identify which genetic ancestors corresponded to which fossil group. The species believed to have contributed 80% of our genetic makeup is Homo heidelbergensis, an archaic human species that lived from around 700,000 to 200,000 years ago, primarily in Africa and parts of Western Europe. Their bodies were stocky and muscular, adapted to colder climates in some regions, with strong bones indicating a physically demanding lifestyle. They averaged a height of between 5 feet 2 and 6 feet, and weighed between 51 and 88 kilograms, 
with males generally being larger than females. Heidelbergensis had a large cranial capacity, averaging around 1,250 cubic centimeters, very close to the modern human average of 1,350. Their skulls were long and low, with a sloping forehead and prominent brow ridges. Their faces were broad, with a projecting midface, a wide nose, swept back cheekbones, and strong jaws that lacked a prominent chin, a key difference from modern Homo sapiens. Their teeth were large, with powerful molars adapted to a diet likely consisting of tough fibrous plants and meat. They stood fully upright, with limb proportions similar to ours. Their long legs were suited for endurance walking or running, and their hands were capable of precision grips, ideal for crafting tools. Their tool set included hand axes, scrapers, and cleavers made of stone used for butchering, skinning, cutting, and scraping, as well as wooden spears for hunting large game like wild deer, horses, elephants, hippos, and rhinos. There's also evidence suggesting they used bone tools, controlled fire, built shelters, and may have had complex social behaviors. This same species is thought to have given rise not only to Neanderthals and Inosivans, but, according to the new study, mostly to us as well. The species contributing the other 20% of our DNA is thought to be Homo erectus, a truly remarkable human ancestor that lived from around 2 million years ago to as recently as 108,000 years ago. Known for its wide geographic range across Africa, Asia, and Southern Europe, Homo erectus was the first of our lineage to develop a truly human-like body plan. They had the same limb proportions as us, implying similar locomotion, and stood about 5 to 6 feet tall, weighing between 40 and 68 kilograms, with males generally being larger than females. Their brains ranged in size from 600 to 1100 cubic centimeters larger than earlier hominins, and some even approaching modern human sizes. Anatomically, Homo erectus had a pronounced brow ridge, a protruding jaw, large teeth, and thick, robust bones. They built simple shelters, controlled fire, cared for the sick and elderly, and may have engaged in abstract thought and symbolic behavior. They were also the first in our lineage to have human-like shoulders, allowing them to throw projectiles at high speed, an adaptation that would have made them efficient hunters with spears and other weapons. They also gave rise to the Aculean tool industry, heavy-duty stone tools like hand axes, cleavers, and picks. These tools required precise grip and planning, suggesting that Homo erectus shared cognitive traits with us. They are often considered the first true hunter-gatherers and possibly the first to practice a division of labor between sexes. In many ways, Homo erectus pioneered behaviors and abilities we now see as hallmarks of humanity, so it's no surprise that this species played a role in shaping who we are. While both early human species, they exhibited differences in brain size, skull morphology, and body size, Homo heidelbergensis possessed a larger brain capacity compared to Homo erectus, a more modern skull shape with a higher rounder volt and a less protruding face. Its nasal opening was more vertically oriented, and its skull bones were less thick compared to Homo erectus. However, Homo erectus had a more robust skeleton overall, but the differences between them weren't so great as to prevent interbreeding. According to this new study, these two ancient species were close enough to mate and produce fertile offspring, and fortunately for us, they did. Their meeting and genetic merging around 300,000 years ago laid the foundation for the modern human species. It's because of that ancient connection that we're here today, able to reflect, reason, innovate, and yes, even enjoy videos like this one. Looking ahead, the team hopes to refine their model to account for more gradual genetic exchanges between populations, rather than sharp splits and reunions. They also plan to explore how their findings relate to other discoveries in anthropology, such as fossil evidence from Africa that suggests early humans may have been far more diverse than previously thought. The fact that we can reconstruct events from hundreds of thousands or millions of years ago just by looking at DNA today is astonishing, and it tells us that our history is far richer and more complex than we imagined.